Hi, my name is James Fryman, and I'm an engineer at StackStorm. Today I'm going to be demonstrating the use of StackStorm within a continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. This is a pipeline that we've created ourselves in order to demonstrate the use of StackStorm and the power of StackStorm in leveraging small, independent actions within many tools to create very complex workflows. So strap in. I'm very excited to show this to you. The application we'll be using today to run through this continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline is SeedShare, which can be found at myseedshare.com. This is a Ruby on Rails application. Briefly, I'd also like to demonstrate the varying components that exist in the pipeline today. As you can see, they're quite varied. Some of them are older tools and some of them are newer tools. Several of the tools use API calls. Others use direct console access. What we hope to illustrate is that StackStorm can adapt to many different ways and many different integrations with many different tools. Likewise, for the purposes of this demo, we try to keep the infrastructure relatively simple. We have a single StackStorm server, a single Jenkins server, a single infrastructure server which contains many roles, including the app server, packaging itself, and the HA proxy load balancer that serves the three web servers that you see below. In addition, one of the web servers is designated as a canary node. This is the node which will be the canary in the coal mine as we deploy new code into production. None of these infrastructure components are particularly unique or required for continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline. You can mix and match your own components that exist in your own organization to create a very similar workflow. All of the code that you see today will be supplied online for you to look through and see how you may be able to potentially use it in your own organization. Let's go ahead and make a small edit to the front page of our website. I'm going to start by going ahead and creating a new feature branch for this change. Now I'm going to go ahead and edit the page itself. I'm going to give it our brand new name because we're, the services are being increased to the new deluxe version. I'll go ahead and save that. And push it up to our name server. Now what should happen is we'll see that an trigger has been emitted from GitHub and absorbed into the StackStorm server, so we should see some action. Let's go look. After we pushed to GitHub, we see that StackStorm has let us know by pushing some events into Slack. We see that StackStorm has started a continuous integration build, however it failed. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on. When I click on the link, I'm taken to my Jenkins server where I can go ahead and check out the output just as I normally would. And I see that one of my tests has failed. So I'm going to go ahead and make a quick edit to that test. We've gone ahead and kicked off our new CI build with our updated test. So hopefully it should pass. But while we're waiting for that to run, let's go ahead and talk about a little bit about the interaction between rules and actions. I've brought up one of the rules from the continuous integration, continuous delivery pipeline story. Briefly, the rule is the backbone and glue code between all of the various components within StackStorm. A rule combines a sensor, which can be an active sensor or passive sensor, such as a webhook, which we're using here, and a sensor emits triggers. Those triggers are then matched against sets of criteria, which you see below. They have many matchers, and assuming the set of criteria is met, then decides what action should be kicked off. Once a rule is matched, it can fire off a single action or a series of actions combined in workflows. Here's an example of an action chain workflow from the continuous integration continuous delivery pipeline. StackStorm also supports Mistral, an OpenStack workflow engine. This engine is designed for more complex use cases we'll be demonstrating this workflow in future episodes. 
This is a pretty brief overview of how the different components within StackStorm work together. If you'd like to learn more about any of the different things that we talked about today, including actions, rules, and workflows, check out our docs at docs.stackstorm.com. Enough time should have passed on our CI build, so let's go check on that status. All right, looking good. So it looks like StackStorm has gone ahead, notified that we have passed our CI build and begun a packaging exercise. What's happened is, at the end of the Jenkins build, StackStorm received an event from Jenkins, matched it to a rule, and kicked off an additional workflow designed to package up and deploy the past build. This is part of our continuous delivery pipeline. So I've pulled my website back up, and now I'm going to refresh it to see if I can hit the Canary host. Now remember, this is a load balanced pair, and only one of the three servers has the new code. I'm going to keep refreshing until I hit my new web server. Ah, so now I see my updated header. Now this is the same behavior as many people would normally see when, they, when you deploy code to a website in this fashion. Typically you're going to have a significant amount of volume or load to your website. And so the percentage of hosts or percentage of users that will see your new code should be relatively easy to track in a graphing or monitoring system of some sort. This Canary pipeline also has a neat little trick that allows you to lock or become sticky to a specific Canary host in the event you need to do additional testing. This is really great for developers who may want to test out code without being subject to random selection by a load balancer. In all, I'm pleased with my change. So now I want to promote this code from more than the Canary host. I want to deploy this code to the rest of my production environment. Let's go do that. Now I'm going to go ahead and execute a workflow to promote the code to production. So I'm going to go ahead and take a look at what actions are available to me. And I'm going to look specifically for this pack, which is the CICD workflow. As I take a look at it, I see that there's a deploy production action. I'm going to go ahead and do that. When Stackstorm now is done, it's received the action and created an execution for it. This is run asynchronously in the background, very similar to how our rules were executed previously. The only difference is, is that our event was begun from the start of an event from GitHub. In this case, we're manually kicking off an action. In a full continuous delivery pipeline, there would be a monitoring aspect in line here. We've chosen to omit that for the purposes of this demonstration. Now, when we flip back to our chat room, we should see success, and we do. The version of seat share that we've now run through this pipeline has now been deployed to production, and we should be able to validate on the command line as we did before. Let's go ahead and try that. Rerunning the same command as I did previously, we should see that web one, web two, and web three all now have the same version of code. Well, that about does it. So we've seen code go from commit to deploy all the way through to production. We saw that with a combination of rules and actions, Stackstorm was able to piece together and combine the functionality of many different tools in order to accomplish this very complex task. And in addition to that, because it's run through Stackstorm, there's an entire audit trail, as well as the ability to program as code the workflows that we talked about today. This video cast is accompanied by a blog post which goes into significant detail, including code examples about how all of this was put together and where it's going. If you like what you saw today, we would definitely love to hear about it. Drop us a line on Twitter, send us an email at support at stackstorm.com, or do us the best favor yet and give our software a try. You can download it at stackstorm.com community. Until next time.